In today's video, I show you how to install and configure TailScale. TailScale is WireGuard backed, easy to use, and set up VPN solution. Let's get TailScale set up. Before we get started, if you haven't joined our Discord server yet, I'll leave a link below. It's a growing community where you can post questions and answers to tech questions, along with just hanging out with like-minded people. Join now so you don't miss out. On to TailScale. The first thing we're going to need to do is jump over to tailscale.com and create an account. Let's jump over there now. Open up your favorite web browser and go to tailscale.com. In the top right, we're going to click Get Started. Now we got to sign in with an account. So your options here are sign up with Gmail, sign up with Microsoft, GitHub, Apple, or with an OIDC account. I'm going to use a Google account, but whichever one you're using, go ahead and select your option. Next, you got to tell TailScale if you're going to use this for business or for personal use. I use it for personal use, and I'm assuming that's what you're going to do, so go ahead and hit personal use. And then hit next. Next, it wants to know what operating system you're going to install TailScale client on. Since I'm running Windows on this machine, I'm going to go ahead and select Windows, and then hit download TailScale for Windows. Agree to the license terms and hit install. Once it's successful, go ahead and hit close. For each device that you're going to run TailScale on, or that you want to have remote access back to your machine on, you're gonna have to install the client. So if you wanna put it on your Android phone, go ahead and select the Android option and then scan the QR code to go right to the App Store to get it installed. Same with iOS, Mac OS, you can download, and Linux, it's a command line. And just so you know, TailScale will allow you to have up to 100 devices for your free TailScale account. So you've got quite a few machines to be able to put it on. So now that TailScale is installed, we need to go sign into it with the same account that we just created. So if you go down to your taskbar, you'll see it listed down there. There'll be a series of nine dots. Right click on it and go to login. And it'll take you to their site. Once again, put in your same email address that you registered with and sign in. And hit connect to connect the device to the TailScale account. Once you see login successful, that means your machine is now part of the TailScale network. Give it a moment, it'll reload, and then it'll show you your machine and its IP address within the TailScale network. And here you'll see that it says it's waiting for a second device. So at this point, we need to go set it up on Unraid. We're pretty much done on this page, so go ahead and hit skip this introduction. You'll notice in the bottom corner here, it pops up and says that your network looks lonely. The free plan lets you build a tailnet with up to three users. You can invite your family and your friends. I'm going to choose no thanks at this point. Now let's jump over to Unraid and get TailScale installed there. I'm going to go up to my server, and we're going to go over to the Apps tab. And we're going to search for the TailScale plugin. All right, up in the search box, I'm going to type in TailScale. Look for the plugin option and select that one. And you'll notice here that there's two options. There's the TailScale plugin and the TailScale plugin preview. The preview option is kind of a beta release, so I'm gonna stay away from that one and use the stable one. So I'll find the TailScale plugin option and just click install there. It's a pretty quick process, so once it's done, you hit done. Just like that. All right, so let's jump over to our settings tab and get TailScale set up. While we're doing that, why don't you come join us in Discord? I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so under settings, we're going to look for network services, and then in there, you'll find the TailScale option. Go ahead and click on TailScale, and then we need to re-authenticate. Basically, we need to sign in with our account. We'll click there, use the email address that you used to create your TailScale account, and hit sign in. Once it's signed in, hit connect. Login successful. There we go. We're signed in. Give it a moment, and it'll jump over to this page. Now you'll see both the demo server and my main PC here are both connected through the TailScale network. The respective IP addresses are listed here. What operating system is running is listed there. Under last seen, it shows if it's connected or the last time that it was on. But we're not quite done. We've got to do a couple other things in Unraid to get it fully set up. So let's jump back over to Unraid server so we can finish up there. You'll notice across the top here, you've got a few different tabs. You've got tail scale, settings, lock, info, help, and log. We're going to go to the settings tab. And then over in the top right, where it says basic view, we're going to flip that over to advanced view. Now on the settings tab, just above where it says apply, you'll find use tail scale DNS settings. We need to make sure that's turned on. So let's go change that from no to yes, and then hit apply. And if you're getting some value from this video, do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe while you're down there. It only takes a second of your time and really helps the channel out. Now to make sure that we can access our containers, we need to go set up the subnet so that we can access those containers. Once that's saved, let's go back to the tail scale tab, go over to there, scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see under settings, Subnet router. Click on the little arrow off to the right, and you'll see here that it says not advertising any routes. So we're gonna need to set up a route back to our home network. If you don't remember what your network is set to, let me show you where it's at. 
So we'll go up to settings, then we'll go to network settings. And down here under IPv4, you'll find the default gateway. And mine is set to 10.0.0.1. That's the gateway for my network. So you'll take that address there. You're going to drop off the last digit and change it to a zero. So in my case, it's going to be 10.0.0.0. Then we're going to add in a slash 24, which is a CIDR notation indicating that there are 255 addresses available. Zero and 255 are reserved. So you'll have a workable range of one to 254. So for my network here, it would be 10.0.0.1 all the way up to 10.0.0.254. So now we'll need to go over to the terminal to set up the tail scale subnet. So let's click on the terminal icon in the top right. And I'll leave this command down in the description so it, you'll have the basics of it there. You'll just have to put in your own subnet address. It's a rather short command, so you probably don't need it, but I'll leave it there anyhow. So the command is tail scale, a space, up, space, dash, dash, advertise, dash, routes, equal, and then whatever your subnet is. So mine is 10.0.0.0, and I'm going to follow that by a slash 24, which is that CIDR notation indicating that there's 254 addresses available. So it's going to be all of our network. Take a look at it, make sure everything is spelled correctly. You've got spaces there. So tail scale, space, up, space, dash, dash, advertise, dash, routes, equal, whatever your subnet is, slash 24. Then press enter, and you'll see it took the command. So now we need to go back to tailscale.com to approve the routes. So I'm going to jump back to my tailscale page. And you'll see here under my Alien Tech demo server, there's now a subnets flag listed there. If you already closed this tab, then you just go back to tailscale.com, sign in. Then under your machines tab, you'll find your machines listed there. So once you found your machine that has the subnets tag, over on the right, we're going to click on the series of three dots. Drop down, and we're going to go to edit route settings. And you'll see that one route is advertised, but it's not been approved. So to approve that, we need to put a check mark in front of it and then hit save. Now, if you go to access a container, it's going to open. So now let's go test it out. Hopefully you've installed this on a device that's not on your home network, like a, a cell phone or something like that. I've just installed it on my local machine. So this IP address here is the one on my tail scale network for my desktop machine. This one up here is for my demo. So we're going to open up a web browser. We're going to type in this address. So I'm just going to copy this, open new tab. We're going to paste that IP address in. Press enter, and you'll see that it's coming right up. So now if we go to log in, you'll see that it's connected through our tail scale network. If you go to up to your Docker tab, find your favorite Docker container, let's say Sonar. We'll open that up. Log in. There you go. It works. This will allow you to access pretty much anything on your home network. Workstations, printers, routers, everything. So there's some security concerns there because you probably don't need access to every device. So what you really should do is just limit the tail scale network to be just to the server itself. You can still share it. You can still get to your Docker containers, but you can't get to your router. You can't get to your workstations. You can't get to anything else in the network. It's a little tighter setup. Let me show you how to do that real quick. So we'll go back to our Unraid server, go back to our command prompt. We're going to type in our command again, just a little bit different. So we're going to type in tail scale, space up, space, dash, dash, advertise, dash, routes, equal. Then we're going to put in the IP address just for the server itself. So 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 11 is what mine is whatever your server address is we'll go in the spot then we're gonna do slash and then instead of doing 24 for the entire network we're going to do 32 which limits it to just that device double check it make sure everything's correct press enter and that's set up now we need to go back to tail scale site and approve that so let's go back to our tail scale site under machines you'll see subnets listed there it's got the little exclamation saying that there's unapproved routes there once again click on the series of three dots Jump down to edit route settings. So now we've got the old one listed here. And like I said, we don't want it on the entire network. Unless you do, then by all means, just leave it there. I'm going to remove it because I don't need that. Then I'm going to select the new address we'd put in, the one with the slash 32, and then hit save. And now once again, if we put in this IP address into a new window, you'll see that it still connects. Now, if you have more than one device that you want to connect, but not the entire network, let's say you do want to have it get to the router and your Unraid server, you can add in multiple devices. Or let's say you have two Unraid servers that you want to have access to, or both servers and maybe your router or a single printer or whatever the case may be. You can reissue the command to enter any device that you want. And you do that by simply adding a comma between the devices. Let me go show you how to do that real quick. Once again, we'll go back to our Unraid server, go back to the terminal. Once again, we need to type in that same command. And if you don't know, there's a handy little thing with most operating systems. 
you press the up arrow, it'll retype out the last couple commands. So press up, press up again. You'll see the previous command before that. Press up again, it'll have the other command. So I pressed up once, there's my same command. I'm just gonna add in the couple that I'd like. This is gonna be 10, add a comma, type in the other address that I'd like, 10.0.0.1132, and then a comma again, and I'll throw in my router too, just for fun. And I'll be deleting all this. 10.0.0.1 slash 32. Press enter, no errors, command executed fine. Let's go back to our tail scale account. Once again, you'll see that it's got the little exclamation point there. We need to click on the three dots, go down to edit route settings, and we can just select the ones that we would like. We're gonna have the router here. We're gonna have my main machine and the demo server here. So we'll hit save and that's all set. So let's go test it out real quick. Here's this IP, we'll copy that again. It's already in there, but we'll paste it in just while it's all nice and fresh. And it comes right up. Let me jump back to Tailscale's site and show you a couple other features. So under each device here, under each machine type, if you click on the series of three dots, you've got some different options there. One, you can edit the machine name. Let's say you don't like demo. You can just click edit machine name. We have to turn off auto generate from OS host name. Then we can change this to something a little more fitting. So let's call this like demo server and hit update name. You'll see that it changes it right there. Go back to those dots, drop down. You can also edit the machine IP address in case you need to change it to something else. You've got the option there. And you'll see here that it says it breaks any existing connections. So you'll need to flush your DNS and stuff, but you've got the option. I'm gonna cancel out of there. Once again, three dots. And this is our share option. And you'll notice that's kind of the default option here, but it, it is listed down there. Same exact command. You click on it, you can share via an email or you can create a link and send it to somebody. You put in the email address, send it off to them, they log into it, it'll tie in your machine into their Tailscale account so they can have access to it too. It's kind of a nice feature. And once you have that set, let's say later on, you're just did it for an evening or something like that, you can go back and revoke the access pretty much at any time you'd like. It's kind of nice. I'm not gonna share this, so I'll close that out. And that's pretty much it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Then check out one of these next and I'll see you in the next one.